So yeah, myself uh, Venkat uh, having around 11 years experience in IT. Uh, most of experience in uh, telecom domain only. Uh, since two years I started working on uh, this uh, RPA technologies. Uh, so that's all the brief about me. Uh, uh, I'm expertise in uh, both uh, UA path and blue vision tools. Okay. Uh, I'll as part of uh, my training, I'll uh, cover UA path in around 20 to 25 classes and around 15 to 20 classes uh, about blue vision. Okay. So RPA uh, is basically it's uh, robotic process automation. Okay. So yeah. Okay, so what is uh, RPA? So many one, you know, many people, uh, you know, keep on uh, thinking that you know, it's RPA is it's a robot, like you know, robot behaves like how human is behaving physically. The robot, uh, robotic process automation, what we are going to discuss is not exactly what human is doing physically. It is, I can say, it's a software robot. After robot, in the sense like uh, how human is sitting in front of uh, system, you know, uh, accessing applications. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm interrupting you because somebody is uh, making noise. Just. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll mute everyone. One second. Yeah. 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 Okay, everybody in mute. Okay, guys, I kept everyone on mute. Okay, in case if you want to talk to me, you can unmute and talk to me. Okay. Okay. Um, so basically, this robot is not a physical robot, it's a software uh, robot wherein uh, it interacts with uh, various applications or portals, you know, uh, desktop applications, or it could be a Citrix machine, or it could be any application from desktop. It will interact like how, how human is, you know, getting interacted with all applications. Say for example, human is sitting in front of you know computer and he access all the word wordpad, notepad, excel sheet, and he will also open uh, you know our various applications. He will also open virtual machines, Citrix app. I mean uh, the remote machines he will open and he will type something. He will take the data from a uh, database. He will put it into an excel sheet and then he will uh, load that into a portal by opening and then manually entering something like that. So all these kind of activities are human is, you know, spending a lot of time and human is, you know, uh, around out of 100, 10 mistakes people are doing on average as for the statistics. So because of all these problems, uh, the robotic process automation came in a couple of years back itself. And nowadays, you know, uh, the customers are struggling, you know, to, uh, uh, to process uh, their uh, existing processes. Uh, uh, for example, if you take uh, any uh, service providing to customers, say for example, broadband connection you are requesting from Vodafone or BSNL or Fiber Act or Airtel, uh, to provide a service to the customer when they get call from the customer, right? They will enter all the data into a portal or an Excel sheet, and then they will go and you know access couple of applications to see whether we can provide service to customer in certain area or not. All these uh, you know uh, activities are taking a lot of time to provide service to the customer. Once the order is entering into the system, also sometimes, you know, uh, there are some issues while entering data into applications and data sync is not there because of that, you know, agents are opening all applications and making data syncing. These are the problems currently customers or uh, service providers are facing. So to, to, uh, to overcome these problems, either in you know, telecom domain or you know, banking domain or finance or BPO or whatever the area, there are so many areas, you know, wherein uh, so many manual activities are happening, so many uh, error, uh, errors are happening due to manual entry. So to overcome all these problems, this RP has come as a solution uh, for the customers, uh, service providers. Okay. So that's where uh, the software robot has come into picture and you know it's playing very good role in current market. Uh, since uh, before one year around 5% people, I mean 5% uh, customers got migrated into RPA solution. Uh, if you see in the last one year around, uh, it reached around to you know uh, 10 to 15% uh, uh, customers and service providers have moved uh, to RPA solutions to use. Okay, that means in one year we have seen uh, so much you know, um, uh, progressive uh, on this RPA uh, usage. If you, if I talk, if I summarize, you know, uh, most of the you know RPA features, at least you know, I talk about seven to eight points. There are so many things. Around thirty-six reasons are there to talk about, you know, why to choose RPA. 
I just summarized into a couple of high level things and then I kept some features and why to choose RPA, I'll talk about it in the next slide. Okay. Uh, normally, if you write Java code uh, or you know PLSQL code or C code or C++ or .NET code, you will deploy that code into a centralized repository. Okay? Uh, that is called you know people most of the people will use the SVN uh, repository because that is the free version. Okay. Uh, in UA Path and Blue Prism also you have an option to deploy all your process onto a version control system like SVN or PF Steam Foundation Server Steam Foundation Server or like that. So you also have a um, uh, version control mechanism uh, in both the UA path and uh, uh, Blue Prism as well. And even most of the RPA tools are you know, uh, built like that only. Security wise, most of the banking uh, projects, you know, they are still struggling to take this RPA tools because they are worrying about the security. Because if any problems uh, happen with the data, it's, it's, it's going to be a huge uh, uh, impact on them. Security features are also there. Uh, in couple of slides, I'll talk about the differences between securities in uh, between most of the you know around 10 to 14 tools are there in the market for RPA. I'll just show you the differences like which one is playing good area in which feature, all those things. Okay, and the rapid development support. Okay, uh, when the custom once the customer taken license, okay, they started using and they may uh, opt for you know we are struggling with so and so uh, feature. We need a couple of additions to this. Okay. That kind of development support is also there from the vendors. The UA path, in that way, the UA path is you know generating the solutions in faster way and then providing solutions to the customer within months also. Even Blue Prism is also doing that. And large group deployment, okay. Uh, once the process is developed, say for example, now you have the data volume of 5% now and you may need one robot or two board, two bots now to uh, run your jobs. Okay, in future, uh, the customer may have more services or more data to process with your processes. At the time, we may deploy more bots on, on your environment. That could be a production environment or test or development environment, whatever it is. It's very easy to you know to group the uh, bots and deployment um, in uh, any environment. Okay. The rule-based exception handling, like how you are handling your exception uh, in Java or you know SQL, PLS, or any course. Here also you have a uh, rule based exception handling is also there that is simple drag and drop and you can add a couple of activities to that. So whatever process you are developing on top of that you can also provide this rule based exception handling as well. Whatever the process you deployed and then whatever the process you are giving to robot to execute, okay, that robot execution also you can make, a, you can deploy the process and you can schedule the jobs according to you know the requirement it could be a midnight or any time day wise or weekly wise monthly yearly like that you can schedule jobs also that which is also in now in most of the RPA tools and release environments I can also you'll also have you know um, uh, uh, development environment you have a release plan uh, test environment you have a release plan and then production environment release plan that is also possible in RPA tools high elastic scalability so you can uh, at any time, uh, you, can, uh, you can enhance your process. You can increase the parts, or you can, uh, you know, disassociate the processes uh, to error parts. All these scalability features are also there. And the last one is uh, uh, work queues. Uh, basically, um, uh, if you have, you know, many transactions in banking projects, okay, uh, uh, there may be multiple parts based on your transaction volume. Uh, once the transaction come to a queue, uh, any Bot can take that uh, transaction. Once the bot can take the transaction, the other bots cannot take the same transaction. For that purpose, two concept is also then both your bot and uh, uh, blue vision. These are the high level features uh, about the uh, RPA. Uh, these are the common features I mentioned here for uh, most of the RPA tools like you know, uh, UI path, blue vision, and automation in India. Okay, so the first question, many. Um, uh, anyone wanted to you know to implement RPA solution the first question rise in their mind is that why to select RPA I have kept a, a couple of major uh, uh, points here to know why the RPA is required for the for our, uh, for our business like if you are if you are if you are working in a telecom domain you may have different uh, reasons for selecting RPA. If you are in banking domain, you may have different reasons. Finance domain, you may have different reasons to select an RPA. 
okay first you need uh, assessment needs to happen okay what we are doing currently what the exact what exactly the process is uh, you know following as of today and where we are lagging where it is taking time and what is the list of features of rpa okay with these features where we can keep in our processes how can we achieve uh, more benefits from this rpa so those kind of questions will be coming first and then uh, they will decide you know whether to choose rpa or not once they decided to choose an rpa then they will think okay which rpa tool is best for us yeah there will be some assessment templates but basically solution rpas are you know solution designers prepare the templates so based on the requirements you can choose you can suggest to you know customers like okay for your requirement is the best tool okay something like that for that again you need to have thorough knowledge of all rpa tools anyway that is different story okay the first thing is that uh, why to choose an rpa tool is that an increase efficiency and accuracy okay uh, if we take a data entry or you know uh, any activity in the bpo so what they will do is a lot of excel sheets will come to them okay they will take all the excel sheet they will open multiple portals they will segregate the data enter it into the system 10 people 20 people 30 people like that you can see in uh, you know in one area where people will uh, they will not apply even any brain okay they will simply take the data and then submit it around 20 to 30, 10 10 to 20% uh, you know mistakes will happen okay and they will uh, 10 resources will be entering instead of 10 resources if you deploy one bot with a simple license fast okay it will do very faster okay if a person is taking uh, say for example uh, one record to enter into a portal okay bot will enter around 20 to 30 records in a, uh, in the same time that's the difference 15 to 15 to 30 percent difference will be there when you compare with the uh, human and the bot so that's the difference even you can improve the process also based on your data uh, cleansing and uh, based on the rules of you know, how you are getting the data and entering into the system if it is many rules you are implementing to convert the data into actual form it may take some time more sometimes more uh, time uh, otherwise it will take uh, less time comparatively with the human activities okay the accuracy is nothing but you know uh, whatever the configurations you do the as per the same configuration it will do it will never do any even single mistake so that's where you can see the accuracy there improve speed to market okay say for example uh, uh, for now you are providing service to say for example i asked a broadband internet connection in my area it may be taking around 10 days to get the service to me Okay, I think no one, no customer is taking that much time nowadays. They are giving within three to four days. If still they wanted to, you know, uh, increase the time to provide service to the customer, okay, uh, you can give it a little bit, you know, less time. Uh, maybe based on your complexity of process, what you are following. Okay, if you if you remove all your manual activities, if you are interacting with multiple systems, where you can deploy your process, centralized process, and it will get the required information. Then you can Put on the screen so that agent can take and they can take decision and inform the customer. Yes, we can provide service to you within so and so days something like that. And the next one is cost arbitrage. The cost wise, uh, you know, uh, currently how many FTEs full time uh, uh, resources are you are using now? And then after uh, placing this bot and process in place in the uh, in the process, how much time it is taking? Uh, obviously, it is thirty to. Uh, Uh, 30 percent, sometimes it may be 40 percent, sometimes 20 percent uh, difference. You can see based on the existing process. If your existing process itself is, you know, very good enough, maybe you may get up to 10 to 15 percent sometimes. So based on the current process, you can tell like how much uh, resources you can save, how much cost you can save based on the process development and the existing process. You can say that. Return on investment. Okay. Investment in the sense, like you know, how much uh, you are paying for a license and uh, how many resources you are using to develop your RPA process. After calculating all the investment within within uh, six months to twenty four months, you can see the result. Okay, that that the benefit of you know RPA tool and the solution you can see within six months to twenty four uh, months. Sometimes within six months, twelve months, six months, fifteen months. Sometimes for six months, twenty four months. Within less time, less span of time, you can see the result. So customer can save money from that. Reduce human errors. It will do whatever you configure in the process. It will never do anything uh, different. So human errors will be very 100 percent less, not very 100 percent uh, zero use errors. Whatever you configure will do same thing. It is proven also in most of the domain areas. Even uh, UiPath, Blue Prism, Base are already uh, assured that 
whatever you configure it will do same thing it will never do anything it is already proven so that's the reason customers are you know uh, daring to take the rpa solutions okay even security wise also whatever if even single mistake happens security wise the rpa guys uh, rpa vendors ready to pay all the penalty amounts that's kind of assurance is also there from rpa guys okay and the next one is standardizing and streamlining the process okay the existing process you have to standardize and you have to streamline maybe customers are using multiple process for the same activity because of different reasons you can centralize that process okay into one process maybe couple of uh, process based on the existing process if it is too much complexity maybe couple of other process are also required scale up or down easily Okay, you can increase the number of robots. You can decrease the number of robots without the downtime. That flexibility is also there. Do more with less. With less license cost, you can do more activities, and you can reduce also more within uh, months or years. Integrate legacy ID applications. Uh, normally, uh, to integrate an application, right? Application programming interfaces are required between two applications. without that without exposing any uh, interface between applications robot can uh, interact with application whatever users are using in wiki like the users will open applications and then type it and access the right the similar way i will use the same wiki application to interact with the applications without having any apis exposed that advantage is also there data migration the next one is data migration uh, the data source may be a database the database could be any sql server microsoft sql server or oracle database or anything it is okay it can get the data from uh, databases and it can pull into a portal using portal uh, from database it can take the data and then enter it to a portal by opening there are a couple of options for it and then it can take data from excel sheet and put it into a database or a portals so using these options you can migrate the data as well improve productivity that is always there with the features like you know uh, accuracy efficiency and the time taking to enter the data all those things uh, define centralized process we can uh, define one centralized process interact with multiple it applications without having any apis exposed and the digitalization okay if you see the past 10 years or 20 years in the hospital you know they are maintaining so many files if a patient comes Uh, and if you want to analyze uh, that patient's uh, you know medical history, you have to open each and every uh, document. Okay, maybe a couple of years back we started with computer, you can search it like that. But still, you need to have some something to search here. Uh, what will happen here is that whatever the documents you have in hospital since ten years, ten years or twenty years or thirty years, you can scan it and then load it with folder, and then you can uh, you can give some naming conventions to that uh, you know documents. Uh, when you give input to a process, okay, it will go and identify the patient related all files. It will analyze based on the process you develop, and it will tell you, okay, what all files are related to so and so diagnostic. So that also you can do. And even in banking also, uh, you can uh, digitalize all the documents, and then digitalization process you can uh, perform. Twenty-four by seven availability and managed workload. The robot will not even sleep. It's not like you know. A uh, employee come to office nine o'clock and he will leave by six o'clock. It will be available by twenty four plus seven. Okay, if one robot is sleeping, the other robot robot will pick the job. Okay, if both are sleeping, uh, you will get an email automatically. Someone uh, has to monitor that uh, all robots are running, or anything is failed, or what is the issue. You can check that. Less dependency on skill, resource, and manpower because you don't need to worry about you know. Uh, for people who ten people require ten people twenty people require some people will. Uh, you know will not even come to office all these problems you can overcome using this bot process reduce redundant business process that is again the centralized processes okay so that's all about you know the reasons why to choose an rpa and the if you see this uh, ppt okay this slide this slide is uh, you know basically uh, i just listed out you know most of the tools uh, you know using currently in the market around 15 tools i kept here uh, the right side one is uh, taken from some one of the gardner uh, reports okay uh, this is the analysis you know technology wise uh, uh, how uh, how they got the rating
Yeah. So the the first column I listed out all the technology categories and the the row I mentioned for each uh, uh, tool like your path automation anywhere nice edge world uh, edge world systems. Okay, someone is starting. Okay, not able to see the PPT. So you're able to see now. Okay, yes. uh, guys, everyone is able to see my screen, or only one guy is having problem? Yes, I am able to see your screen properly. Yeah, okay. I think. Uh, uh, okay, the uh, high. I think some problem from your end. We can check it out. Okay, when I did F5, some people are not able to see uh, the screen. Okay, no problem. I will continue uh, like this one. Okay, so here if you see uh, the most uh, the popular tools in the market is like uh, UI Path, Blue Prism, and Automation Anywhere. And the open span, uh, it's the, yeah, someone is. Micronet your screen, please, Micronet your screen. Yeah. Okay, I hope everyone is able to see my screen. If you, someone is not able to see, just let me know. So it's okay now, right? Everyone is able to see my screen, right? Okay, I hope everyone is able to see my screen. No, I am unable to see your screen. Okay, if I uh, if I maximize, you are not able to see the screen. Okay, no problem. You are able to hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. One thing. Uh, what I will do is I'll proceed like this. So I'll share this recording to you guys again. You just share me all your email IDs to me. I'll just share this through YouTube, too, so you can watch at any time. Okay. Uh, I think uh, you guys have my WhatsApp number. You just share me your email IDs to me. Okay. Uh, I can share this recording to you guys. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. So. This is uh, the list of you know the uh, RPA tools in the market. Uh, you know nothing to you know go through all the tools. Uh, the major tools in the market is that the first three, and there is one tool called Work Fusion, which is uh, this one, uh, Work Fusion. Uh, this is a uh, open source tool in the market. Other than that, the, all the remaining tools are uh, paid uh, tools. Some they are paid. They are you know. The license cost is based on uh, the number of bots you are deploying. Sometimes, you know, based on the number of processes you are deploying. The tool, uh, you know, tool wise, they are providing like that, uh, you know, the license. Okay, so the right one, the picture, uh, what it is, you know, telling is that which tool is having good rating at what technology. Okay, if we see the first one, the bot. Okay. The bot I'm saying here is about uh, you know basically uh, system is a bot here, okay. Same as example my system, okay. My system is one bot, okay. Uh, there is one centralized web-based application called Orchestrator and UA Path, okay. What you will do there, you will specify what all robots here. What are robot is same here. Some blue vision guys will talk as resource there, okay. And UA path, they will talk it as uh, robot there. Okay, robot is nothing but a machine. Okay, a machine uh, which will and that will also have a username password for it. Okay, and then uh, the, say for example, if you configured your machine as a bot, okay, that will act as a human. Bot is nothing but a system here. Okay, and you will configure the system to run a couple of processes like how you, how human is behaving, like logging into a system. Okay. That will go into a system, lock into a system, open an application, open an Excel sheet, open Word file to do all the activities. Bot is nothing but a kind of uh, you know uh, a machine which uh, mimics like human how human is performed. That is again software robots, not a physical robot. Okay. Okay. So so when I talk about bot or uh, robot or resource, okay, that is a machine. Okay. That is a software bot or software robots or software resource. Okay, don't get confused. Okay, anyway, uh, as part of our class agenda, I'll talk about all bots also, how it performs, how it works, how it acts like human, all those things we'll discuss in later stages. Okay, so basically, uh, UA path, uh, if you see the technology wise, okay, UA path is you know bot deployment, uh, bot development, and you know core functions. If you see the rating of uh, 
the rating for UA Part Three Point Two Five for Bot Development and Core Functions. And if you see uh, the remaining two, three point seven zero for the automation anywhere, and for group vision is two point five zero. Okay, bot development wise, it is you know it will take a little bit time to deploy bots to configure the bots. But whereas in the automation anywhere in three point two five, it is very fast you know to deploy your bots onto uh, onto your process. And if you see the control room, control room is nothing but uh, you know it's a place wherein you know you configure all your robots to run your process, scheduling jobs, accepting the transactions to queues. So all those things will happen in the control room. That is again a web-based portal in UA Path. But in control control room is the 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 word control room is uh, you know related to group vision, whereas in UA Path uh, that is you know orchestrator. So we will talk about all those things. Okay. There are two things here to develop any process and deploy. One is studio, and the other one is the orchestrator or control room. Studio is the place where you develop your all processes, okay? And the control room or orchestrator is the place where you deploy your process and associate with your uh, robots, okay? We will discuss about that. Don't get confused. Control room in the sense like the place where you will tag all your process to your robots to execute on time basis, on time weekly basis or daily or monthly. So that execution process and all will configure in the control room and orchestrator. So we'll see that later. Okay. If you see the rating wise, on average for the UA path is 3.67. The tool came in uh, market very late, but uh, the features of uh, UA path tool are very good. Uh, if you see around six months back, you know uh, everyone is talking about full prism automation anywhere. If in the in the market now people everyone is asking about UA path because the features. Uh, the development uh, time and the deployment time and you know uh, uh, quick access quick fix all those things are very good in ua path that's the reason everyone is asking about ua path nowadays group prism is little bit less market share wise 30% market share is there for group prism uh, but for ua path around 15 20% is there but now it is getting increased the tool has come in around 2014 15 but it is very good now If you see the rating wise, uh, UA Path is 3.67, Automation Anywhere is 3.63, Nice is 3.50, and Group Prism is 3.19. It's very well old tool, and uh, that's the reason uh, many customers are using Group Prism. So, as part of uh, my training agenda, I'll talk about UA Path and Group Prism. Okay. And the remaining tools like OpenSpan, uh, it's earlier OpenSpan uh, developed that tool uh, recently around uh, months back. Pega. Uh, company have taken acquired that, and they are you know changing a couple of things to that. Okay. Okay. The next one I uh, will talk about the UA path. This is the high level architecture of uh, UA path. Uh, uh, as I said, the UA path studio is the place where you will develop all your processes. Once the process is uh, developed, you will deploy onto the UA path orchestrator. UA Path Orchestrator is a web-based portal uh, wherein you can see all your uh, environments like web environment, test environment, uh, production environment, and what all the robots configured, uh, you know, uh, for your process and deployment. Uh, you can configure number of robots there based on your uh, process and volume of data to process. Uh, Orchestrator is the place where you know you can uh, deploy uh, your bots uh, or robots, and you can uh, deploy your processes. And you can deploy, uh, you know, you can match your, you know, which process to execute by which robot. All those things you can uh, add in Orchestrator. Uh, in UA Path Orchestrator, you can see a uh, couple of there are different uh, types of uh, bots here: attended and un unattended robots. There is another bot called the free robot is also there. That is basically for you know developing process and testing purpose. You can use that. And for uh, monitoring all your jobs, process, and bots, you can use the attended kind of uh, uh, um, attended kind of uh, bots there. And the unattended is basically to execute your uh, processes. And and UA Path is already having uh, you know built-in uh, couple of automation processes like for mainframe they have some uh, already uh, built-in process, and SAP also they have some built-in process. Along with that, you have to customize and you can develop some processes like you know web-based uh, process and Citrix processes, and we will discuss all those things. 
and the, the the third one the right one is third party applications like uepath orchestrator will interact with third party applications like portals interacting with database interacting with the desktop applications like excel c board all those things this is the high level architecture the main three components you can see in uh, uepath that is uh, uepath studio uepath orchestrator and the last one is robot which is bot okay Okay, so these are the component, the little bit low level components you can see in studio, what all you can see, like types of projects, like, you know, sequence projects, a state machine projects, flowchart projects, you can see like that, different projects are there. I will talk about when I start with the class, the first navigation class. And the second one is desktop automation, in the sense like, you know, whatever the applications you are using in your desktop, like Notepad, Excel, Calculator, Word, all those applications are comes under the desktop automation. And Citrix automation is basically uh, wherein you will interact with remote machines, uh, virtual machines to interact with those kind of machines. The automation will happen uh, through Citrix automation. And web automation is basically to interact with your portals. And skin slapping is basically to slap the fields from the portals. Data slapping is uh, you know to slap the data which is in structured format. The next one is Excel and PDF automations. Then we interact with Excel to migrate the data. When you are doing digitization, uh, you will talk about PDF automation there. And email automation also there, like, you know, to receive an email, to send an email, to, to send an email with attachment, to receive an email and download attachments. And once the attachment is happening, then you go on to uh, the PDF files or Word files and analyze something, what is there in that, based on that, you can develop the process and, and you can make it automate, uh, automate email kind of things also there. And the orchestrator, you can see, like, you know, you can create users, roles, bots, environments, and the processes and packages, what you develop, you can deploy. Assets is basically the credentials related and any inputs to your process, those will come under uh, assets. The queues is basically to access to, you know, to get the uh, transactions from your process and, you know, and give it to uh, bots to execute it. And the jobs is basically timely manner if you want to execute any jobs, that jobs you can schedule. And the alerts and logs also you can uh, have in both your path and Google Vision. Okay? The third party applications could be it could be a desktop or it could be a Citrix or web portal or GUI or Skin or any applications. Okay, so this is the first screen. Uh, you know, when you open the uh, UI Path Studio, okay, you can uh, uh, you can see a couple of you know uh, uh, blocks here. The topmost uh, blue color ribbon is basically to start the the start is basically to create a new process. If you want to open existing process, you can open there. The design tab is basically to design your process according to your requirement. And the setup is basically to set up your uh, uh, Internet Explorer or Mozilla, whatever the setup you want to have, or even to set up your uh, the desktop configurations and all those things you can do there. And the, the projects you can see in the left side here, the projects you can see whatever projects you deploy, whatever the sample Libraries you deployed, you can see in the libraries here. And the recording options, as I said, you can see the desktop recording, basic recording, web recording, and system recordings. So you can do uh, you know, a couple of processes using recording options also. Still scrapping is basically to scrap the fields and get the data from portals. Data scrapping is basically to deal with your uh, you know the structure of data kind of things. Uh, this is the overall uh, screen uh, visibility here. You can see you know the properties of each and activity here. The activities are basically, you know, a couple of activities you would interact with, you know, to get the input from the customer, to show the output to the customer, to interact with the portal, to interact with the Excel, to interact with the world, the world. All those activities you can see in the left side on the activities panel here. Okay, so these are the couple of, you know, sections I segregated one by one, separately in uh, Studio. I'll open the UA path uh, tool and then I'll show you all those things. So this is the uh, UA path orchestrator where you can uh, deploy your process, robots, and your queues, schedules, all those things. The left side, you can see the bots, the number of bots, whatever you have configured for environment. The environment could be a test development or production environment. You can see all the all bots here. And the process, whatever you developed in the studio, in the previous window, like I showed you there. So that those process you can deploy onto uh, the, the orchestrator. And this process you can uh, you know link with your bots to you know to execute it. And assets are basically to credentials uh, to store your credentials or to store any inputs. That input input could be a file or it could be a text or it could be a number or it could be any path of your file like that. 
and the queues are basically to uh, you know to process your transactions and then give it to bots to execute as per the schedules you do it in the schedules here and the jobs are basically based on the schedules jobs will be thrown here and the jobs will be taken by the bots and then execute there logs are basically to you know to store your uh, logs when uh, the process are executing by the bots if any errors you can see there okay and the dashboard kind of visibility is also there like you know the bots how many if we can see the green color here the number of bots are in available state and the number of bots are busy in the orange color we can see and the discounted bots is like this one so discounted bots are more here and the unresponsive means bots are not responding is the uh, you can see uh, the dashboard the kind of visibility here and the jobs also how many jobs are successful how many are faulted how many are cancelled all those things you can see and the number wise you can see the process 38 process are there 27 assets are there uh, 18 uh, queues are there and 13 schedules are there you can see the list like this this is all about the orchestrator of your box when it comes to group vision uh, the artist uh, the architecture is a little bit uh, different uh, in the blue in the ui path you might have seen only one uh, one place to develop your process that is called studio uh, but in blue prism there are two processes one is object studio and another one is process studio the object studio is basically it will give you all the features say for example if you want to interact with excel sheets okay one business object is required first to interact with excel sheet using that business object you will do a couple of activities in the process studio here okay whatever process you are doing here it will go and interact with the business object and then using that it will interact with the applications this is the business logic which you implemented in the videos that is uh, visual business object okay the architecture is like you know whatever process you deployed in group vision process here it will always interact with the business objects here and the business objects will go and interact with the business logic using the user interface whatever you deployed in the BPO. okay and the process whatever you deployed will go and sit in the blue prism database okay uh, once you execute this blue prism database will have all the process deployed here the control room is the is the you know place where you will uh, interact uh, you will connect all your bots to your process from the once the bot is executed your process uh, in the database that will go and interact with your vpos and then uh, the user interface whatever you deployed in the visual basic uh, visual business object here it interacts with the business logic and interact with the applications whatever you the third party applications okay that's the high level architecture of uh, blue vision and this is the screen of uh, blue vision i will open the uh, i think blue vision some issues are there okay i'll i mean i'm not open to open blue vision to now the license got over yesterday okay uh, for ua path i'll show you okay so again the studio whatever you're seeing here it is similar to uh, uh, UA path studio but the difference is like two kinds of studios will be there one is uh, object studio and the other one is you know process studio here wherein UA path only one studio will be there to develop all your objects and process everything okay the control room is like similar to orchestrator how you are dealing with your bots and process this is the control room here only one place here like there are no uh, two places so one portal itself you can see both studio and control room the dashboard is like you know the home page is uh, you know same as dashboard only, just replicate the same thing here. Even you can customize this uh, dashboard as well in Blue Vision. The releases uh, section is basically to really uh, to uh, to uh, okay, uh, to deploy your uh, the releases like you know release one, release two like that. Okay, this is the control room wherein you will all see uh, your session management like what all queues are you know created here and then what queues is having what transactions you can see all this in the right side. You can schedule the jobs and schedules also you can see here dashboard is similar to that and the release management is like this for this you know package releases system is basically you can configure all your workflow security related thing user related thing all those things you can handle here okay after completing all the classes will also you know uh, use a couple of use cases for data migration integration and email automation excel automation pdf automations and program concepts also have some use case at last Okay, uh, that's all about the demo. Let me open my uh, UI path uh, studio. I'll open how it is. I'll open and show you a couple of things. And then I'll open for questions. So UI path is, uh, you know, basically you can uh, get the free trial version for 12 weeks. Okay, you can install it. And after 12 weeks, also you can, uh, you know, even uh, 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 extend for a couple of weeks as well. I'll tell you that process. 
for blue prism uh, we have a different process to get it i will talk to you later in offline okay so this is free trial version so as i said uh, in my ppt the first uh, uh, studio is the one i talked about it uh, ua park studio okay this is the screen i showed you okay this is the first screen you can see uh, here let me open the previous uh, you know the couple of processes okay these are the uh, processes i developed as part of previous batch around 25 24 uh, uh, processes i developed as part of a previous batch okay uh, the first time when you are developing your process you have to create your process if you have an existing uh, you know process you can you can open and then you can get the process and then you can get into your studio and then you can deploy on to orchestrator if you are creating a new process you have to click on blank and then uh, you do process name and then uh, the process window will open like this and then you go and you know develop your process based on your complexity like uh, sequences you know if it is simple and there is no complexity you will use the sequence kind of projects if it is little bit complex you can use either flow chart or state machines uh, kind of thing if it is transactions related then only you will use state machine otherwise most of the cases you will use flow chart uh, kind of thing only okay uh the first window is like you know the first one start is basically when you are starting with the first process uh, you start the start tab and the design is area is the where the, the place where you configure your uh, you configure your process and the execute is basically to execute your process and debug mode or normal mode or break or step into our mode or all those modes are there setup is basically to set up uh, you know the uh, uh, extensions uh, maybe uh, you may not the default uh, you know browser is for this your part is internet explorer and if you don't have internet explorer you can configure uh, for chrome or firefox or server light or like this okay and this is for deploying your process and this section is to execute your process and this section is to develop your process okay and this is the variable section and this argument section if you want to import any namespace you can import here like this okay and these are the act list of activities uh, you know to interact with your applications like uh, application if it is csv file you can interact with the using these uh, activities if it is excel you can interact with these activities if it is ftp you can interact with these activities if it is mail smtp mail or pathway or outlook or imap exchange these many options are there okay a couple of things are to send an email couple of things are you know to receive an email we will discuss about all those things in detail this is for xps document automation pdf word terminals web portals all those things this is for indication purpose okay and cognitive also this is the recently uh, ua path is you know coming with the latest technologies to integrate with your ai machine learning ibm watts and all those things this came in couple of weeks back only this is the new technology new features coming into ua path i will talk about this also in previous batches i have not discussed about these uh, cognitive features so these features are coming now uh, you know to uh, google uh, deep learning related and google text analytics related ibm watts and related analytics also came now it's not full fledged being implemented but still it is going on whatever is there we will discuss in uh, coming classes okay and this uh, cognitive is and the ua interaction like you know if we are uh, dealing with the images you can go with the uh, ocr activities skin scraping mouse related activities all those things and normal uh, you know activities you can go with this element activities and text related you can go with skin scraping get the text get text position all those things you can go with it and if it is in programming concepts like collection concepts are there and debug execution modes are also there and execute concept like to invoke any method if it is any database related tables uh, you can interact with this you know table concepts and if you if you are dealing with any xml related like you know dc realize cls kind of things then this is basically to you know to call your apis okay normal this is not required with skills graphing itself you can do in case if any API is exposed for many applications. You can use these concepts or ways of it. Okay, and programming concepts also you can implement like you know uh, the while do while for each loop. All these concepts are also there. So these things you will use always in most of the processes. Okay, these are the major uh, things. In addition to that, you will also you use these things happen to interact with any applications. Uh, you know to interact with multiple applications and get the consolidated data. data scraping is you know basically to uh, get the structured data like amazon data to automate or flipkart to automate the combination of both skin scraping and data scraping will use okay so this is the you know brief about the ua path studio and the 
and orchestrator you don't need to install only studio uh, uh, installation is enough and for uh, this thing uh, platform dot uh, dot com is the place you know where uh, you interact with uh, the orchestrator so i will talk about that also as part of my classes this is the place where you will open your orchestrator and then you will deal with your process and parts here so this is the window i am showing you this same window you can access you know community edition is there you can log in and you see that Okay, that's all about the UI path. Uh, Blue Prism, it is there, but license is over uh, yesterday, so I may not be able to show you that part now. Okay. So that's all about you know uh, the brief about uh, RPA tools uh, that is UI path and uh, you know Blue Prism. Okay, any questions, guys? Yeah. Okay. So, like, uh, what kind of background things you can learn in this? Uh, uh, like UI path or Blue Prism, which is the best, and uh, what kind of job opportunities for uh, like uh, UI path or Blue Prism? Which is the best and the opportunity which is uh, more opportunity to have in mind? Yeah. So when I um, uh, before six months, okay, uh, when I keep my profile in any portals, okay, now we are master bear, right? Uh, everyone is calling and you know asking for blue vision. This is you know just before you know September and August last year. Okay, uh, people are keep on asking. You know, uh, everyone is asking blue vision. We need blue vision. We want to learn blue vision like that. If you see since the last uh, February, everyone is asking about UA part because. These guys, you know, uh, uh, anyway, both Blue Prism and UA Path uh, tools are built on both uh, uh, both built on uh, this .NET framework only. Okay, mm -hmm. the implementation time is very less compared with the Blue Prism. The implementation time for UA Path is very less. Okay, uh, say for example, uh, if you take a process to implement as per the customer requirement, in Blue Prism, if it is taking one week. In UA path, you can implement that in two to three days, mm -hmm. and with better uh, fe better features. And if you want to fix if any issue with the process, the fixing time is also very less in UA path. Okay, the modification of existing process is also very easy. The deployment process is also very easy. The develop the deployment of uh, the deployment and configuration of bots also very easy because of these main features. Now everybody is going with uh, UA path. The other reason is that the support from UA path is always good. Mm -hmm. Support okay. is more, right? Support is more. Support is more and always, you know, quicker when compared with other tools. Okay, customers are you know preferring uh, UA path because of these reasons. And market-wise, also, uh, now. Uh, Blue Prism market sharing wise around 30% is there because the tool is there since 2004 onwards. Because of that reason, the market share is more on Blue Prism. But UA path, if you see six months or eight months back, it is around 11% or 12%. Now it is cost around 16, 17%. I'm not uh, sure exact uh, figure, but it is booming like anything. Okay. And jobs wise, currently in the market, uh, Recently, if you see some February onwards, the students getting more calls on UA parts. But before January, Blue Prism is more. Okay? And the kind of work what clients are expecting on this RPA tools is that there are, there are different kinds of roles. There are three kinds of roles they're expecting. One is technical architect positions, and the second one is business analyst, and the third one is developer positions. Okay? For developer positions, they are expecting minimum one year experience on any tool. It could be UA path or Blue Prism or uh, you know automation anywhere. If you know any tool, we will take. They used to say like that, but recently they are asking, "Do you know UA path?" That's the question I'm hearing from the students. Okay, and the development wise, uh, what, from a technical architects, what they are expecting is that uh, you should be able to suggest to the customer which tool is best and why. And you should be able to tell to customer, this is what the process you are executing now. If you keep any of these RPA tools, these are the benefits you will be getting. Say, for example, now for your process, you are uh, investing this much money 
you are having around 20 employees to do so and so job if you take license from uh, any rpa tool okay say for example 5000 pounds uh, uh, per bot per year or 6000 pounds per bot per year like that and you are investing this much for license per year for developing your process this many resources are required and how much cost is costing for to completely develop your process okay and after deploying your process how much uh, you know saving you are getting so all these things are customers expecting from the technical architect guys okay so based on that uh, they are you know deciding whether to take rp or not i showed you right couple of reasons why to select rp you should be able to tell to customer in all these aspects that is they are expecting from the technical architecture guys and business analyst guys what they have to do is they should have both the domain knowledge and the rp tools knowledge also like they will get the requirements from the customer they will prepare some design documents give it to developers to develop the process once the process is developed they has to take the, the guy a technical architect and the business analyst both the guys have to take the process to explain to a customer and then this is what the process is going on any suggestions this kind of things they are expecting from both the business analyst and architecture architect and for developer just few development they are expecting so these are the three roles going on currently in the market and if you talk about you know what kind of for companies recruiting this whoever is having this telecom domain projects okay when you go for you know to get a project from the customers okay okay we are ready to give project to you okay in addition to the project what we are doing now you should also be able to suggest which rp tool i need to use to improve my service to provide to customer very quickly so do you have that kind of resource also with you they are asking that kind of questions so that's the reason every company is you now starting a practice uh, group Separately, every customer is asking that that question. If we don't have, if if the if a company say that we don't have any RPA practice without with us, no, they are not giving any project to them. So for this, any programming language required? No, in no programming language is required. Say for example, if I want to say, uh, if I want to implement something, right? You need to have some logical, uh, you know, thinking. Say for example. i will migrate data from excel sheet to a database okay you have a data okay if this data is this you do so and so this else you do so and so this this kind of knowledge is required just just drag and drop only you don't need to write any code in any rpa tools but in ua path you don't need to write any code in groupism also you don't need to write any code but still groupism is giving an option to write code in case if tool is not supporting some of the features for you that codes okay. are so without coding knowledge also the person can uh, yes. cover with the rpa right yes yes even if you have testing background also you can write even if you have a supporting knowledge also you can just you reset you just need to know how to implement the tool for the requirements but for the senior people what they are expecting is some domain knowledge some customer interaction skills they are expecting for pure developers if you know how to you know use the tool that is enough for business analyst if you know the just concepts of rpa and if you know the business analyst analytical skills that is enough if you know rpa also there is more than enough okay package wise package is uh, package wise package wise again it is depending on your your current package okay mm -hmm. and if you are a senior 10 plus years experience guy okay what they are expecting is they are expecting something from the customer like you know you should be able to suggest to customer okay so if you use your rpa this rpa solution you will get this much benefit you should be able to showcase some pos to the customer you should be able to justify between your domain knowledge to rpa okay this is what the currently process you are using if you use the rpa for this solution you get this much of benefit something like that if you you be able to explain you will so get more convince the customer and we have to bring the project right yeah not only getting project you should be able to showcase some pos to the customer you know customer should get some impression from you that okay good this is good this many features are there this company is having you know skill set to you know to do so and so processes okay something like that just to get some you know just to showcase your uh, uh, strength to the customer and get some more positive from the customer you should be in that position in that case you are getting around 25 to 30 lakhs also and if you have minimum 10 plus years experience for a normal one year two years developer they are minimum giving 4 lakhs 
Okay, it depends on the current package and your knowledge. And you should be able to tell that, okay, if you use UA path, these are the benefits for you. Based on your requirement, UA path is fit for you. And blueprint is fit for you. You should be able to tell like that as a senior. Okay, any other questions, guys? Uh, uh, Venkar sir, this is Rajesh. So yeah, can I take a couple of can I can I take couple of minutes to add yeah, some I'll you, something? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll give you a couple of minutes after all these questions are over. Yeah, I'll that's why I'm just waiting. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, I, I have that plan also. Don't worry. I'll tell. I'll give yes. you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So one question yeah. I'm seeing in chat: Which one is easy tool to learn? So UA path is the easiest tool to, to learn, and more concepts are there, and you can learn it easily. <laughs> Uh, hi Venkat, this is Vijay here. Uh, I would yeah, like Vijay, to know, like this is uh, platform independent, right? This automation can be done in any of the operating systems, like uh, Mac, uh, Windows. Uh, no, no, or no. It no. Supports only Windows. Development, the development is on Windows because it's a Microsoft uh, based tools. Okay, because okay. all these tools are developed on uh, .NET framework. Okay, the installation uh, and everything will sit in uh, Windows machine only, but it interacts with your uh, uh, any machines like you know using Citrix. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you said like it supports also apps. When, I, when you say apps, right, is it something related to uh, mobile apps or something? No, no, no. Or desktop apps. Desktop apps. Okay. Yeah, so like there Word, are some... Word, Excel, C, like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Vijay, uh, to answer your question, I seen a couple of uh, R&Ds are going on. Uh, okay. So, in soon, uh, within a year, you may see that uh, how to automate uh, with the RPA tools. You may see in the market a couple of R RPA tools to fulfill mm -hmm. your requirement to even though automate, automate Android apps as well as uh, the other operating system, even though that is running on Linux. So, because the Microsoft also developing the new operating system with the help of Windows plus Linux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what is yeah. uh, current in the current uh, with the current features? You don't have that option. With the apps in the sense, it's like only desktop apps. In future, yeah. what they are concentrating on is you know they are integrating all the with the uh, yeah artificial intelligence related, machine learning related, and IBM Watson. Uh, you, I think you are aware of IBM Watson chatbot. So they are yeah. integrating with that, and they are also integrating with Google Deep Learning also. So those features are almost, I think I have seen, I uh, shown you what cognitive features, right? There's just a couple of weeks back it came and they're still improving it. In next six months, you can see that also. Like uh, Rajesh uh, said, you will also see in a couple of more uh, features, uh, you know, in addition to the existing features. Oh, okay. Thank you. And other thing what I have is, I mean, we have seen many other automation tools, right? In the testing, let's take an example of testing itself. So we yeah. have QTP or we have IBM oh, RF yeah. or... Yeah, so, I mean, Selenium is something coming, uh, completely related to coding part. Uh, mm -hmm. QTP, so it requires less coding. They just, I mean, it's also a Windows uh, a yeah. tool, right? So if I have to compare with RPA to this, uh, can you please uh, give me some example or can you please di differentiate between these tools? Yeah, so uh, in the testing tools, uh, you know, uh, uh, you may not be able to interact with the uh, the PDF documents, images, right? Uh, you may uh, you may write some codes, you know. You may give you know recording options to interact with applications. There are very limited options will be there in the testing uh, automation tools like uh, QTP or Selenium like that. But whereas in the UI path or you know Blue Prism, okay, you will see more features. Not only you know the coding knowledge. If you have a C program with you, like you know, 100 or 200 lines, the same thing you can implement in UA path or Blue Prism by simply drag and drop. But the oh. coding features you cannot implement in the testing tools. Okay, oh, and okay. it's uh, RPA tools will interact with your portals. Okay, you mm. open a portal, it log into a portal. Say for example, if you take Amazon application, right? Amazon yeah. portal. Okay, it will it log logs in into portal. It will get all the and then the uh, say for example if you are searching for samsung mobiles with so and so uh, ram and like that it will go and search it will get mm -hmm. all the samsung mobiles with uh, all the item name and the urls and cost rating everything using the data scraping and skill scraping and then pull it pull into an excel sheet and send you an email 
So okay. the testing tools cannot do this. I'm just giving yeah. an example so you now you can understand easily. And okay. it interacts with the database, it pulls the data, it can pull the data into an Excel sheet, and it takes the data and enter into portals, and again it will enter into different kinds of database also. That is possible with the RPA tools, but in testing tools that may not be possible, right? Yeah. So, uh, so can we use this as a testing tool as well? Can we can, can we give uh, this? To you? Yes. You say for testing in the sense like you know if you are uh, taking data and then one by one you are going mm -hmm. to a portal and then verifying data. Yes, you yeah. can verify. It can verify. Oh. Okay. Just okay. scrapping techniques. Yeah, why I'm asking this question is, I mean, most of the organization, they use different tools, right? So for development, they might yes. be a developing yes, they are one. Using, they are yeah. using RPA tools using for this kind of testing also. I'm not 100% you know, uh, experienced on uh, the most of the you know, testing tools like Selenium and all. But uh, if it is portals, if you want to compare two portals, like data is matching or not, if you have an Excel sheet, if you want to go and verify the Excel sheet with your portal, those kind of testing can be done using RPA tools. Oh, okay, okay, that's really great. Well, because this is an advantage. I mean, instead of yeah. paying two separate licenses, like if we can just go with one tool, then it would save a lot of money. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any questions, guys? If no questions, I'll hand over it to Rajesh. Rajesh uh, uh, is basically he started a startup company. He is also having a couple of ideas uh, for us, and uh, he will explain uh, those things. Uh, Rajesh, go ahead. Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, hi to all. This is Rajesh. Uh, I have uh, 13 years of IT experience in various uh, different skills, even the legacy as well as data warehousing, as well as uh, uh, data science, whatever the advanced technologies like machine learning and uh, deep learning with uh, even blockchain technologies. So we started a startup company recently. So we started operation in the month of January. And uh, we we are uh, in the uh, process of uh, hiring talented people. So because of the so many so many issues in the market, uh, so we are not able to find out really uh, people on emerging technologies like uh, RPA, data science, big data, and blockchain. So these skills we required for our product development. So that's why I just uh, interacted with uh, Venkat sir. He said uh, he is uh, going to provide RPA training. So uh, apart from this introduction, I, I will I will tell you the future of RPA. So nowadays all the emerging technologies, whatever I mentioned just now, so those are going to rock the IT industry in coming years. So if you know all the old traditional model of technologies, so my better suggestion is please upgrade your skills. Otherwise, you will be in a problem in the down, down the line after one year or two years. Okay, that is the point. So coming to the RPA, so Sar mentioned as UI path is have larger scope compared to the other tools because of the recent data science. So nowadays the data science combination of big data means uh, based on the Hadoop platform, whatever Hadoop ecosystem. So nowadays, all uh, IT industries are moving towards decentralized system, not centralized system. So previously, all IT projects are any clients, they are asking about more on centralized process. But now the recent trend is started on decentralized process. So based on decentralized process, all these new technologies are going to build. So that's why market is slowly moving into the new technologies. So coming to our startup company process, so last month we got a lot of requirement on RPA. So only single company, as Venkat sir mentioned, like developer role, architecture role, and uh, 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 senior position roles, they asked us to 30 positions for single company, not even the multiple companies. But uh, sorry to inform you, but we didn't provide any uh, proper talented guys except one profile got shortlisted. So this is the market. So market is going to rock on RPA. If you are learning, so don't just learn. So learn for the new updates. What are the updates are coming on the technology? So for, for fulfill the market requirement and to fulfill the technological gap, so that we are also providing one program called internship. 
so who is learning on new technologies like rpa or data science or big data or blockchain so based on our product requirement we are providing internship program uh, based on hyderabad location if you are physically available you can join with our company and you can even drop a mail on uh, our hr uh, mail id so hr@fikweb.com so this is very new company and we are getting more uh, support and monitoring Uh, monitoring activities from nris because all these technologies operation they started in us singapore and malaysia so this is the little bit about so if anybody is interested on new technologies as well as internship program because in coming years so people won't take you in in the different roles of your career simply you just crack the interview they want real time scenarios and they want uh, technical aspect of answers required so you people need to prepare very well based on your theoretical knowledge as well as little bit of implementation knowledge so this for this we are providing a platform so this is little bit into if you people interested so either you drop a mail to me or you just inform to uh, venkat sir so that we together come up with some plan and uh, we are uh, uh, using to provide the, uh, we are going to provide the quality people to the it industry as well as we are planning to build lot of projects based on these technologies as well as we have positions in our product development so this is the opportunity you to after completion of your course you can grab the opportunity even within our company as well as you can place in other it companies so this is the information i want to share uh, thank you venkat sir for the time yeah thanks rajesh yeah so thank what we can you. do is uh, maybe i can get uh, rpa related things to me i will also provide any some pos is kind of things in addition to rpa if you want to have some intern internship like you know 3 months or 4 months or 6 months you can go ahead and you can uh, you can uh, practice there and if any openings you know if rajesh comes from any client you know requirement on the practice what you are doing or pos what you are doing rajesh can place in uh, the company and then you will get salaries also good salaries also and if you have good performance there even rajesh can recruit you and then you can get uh, you know salary based on your uh, performance okay any questions guys Uh, okay, guys. Uh, you, uh, I think you might be seeing my WhatsApp number. You can share it. Uh, whoever is, you know, with uh, our Rajesh, you can share your details with Rajesh. Or if you even you can share with me, I can keep it in an Excel sheet and I'll share all these demos. And every day's class also, what I will do is I'll upload it to YouTube and then uh, to email whatever you are giving. I will share it with you, and you can watch the you know every day every day's recording and you can practice accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I share my company HR ID detail. So, if you people interested or not, uh, if you people even interested, whoever uh, all ex experienced guys, if you are even interested for other uh, coming technologies, means other future technologies also, we can uh, doing a lot of R and D. So, you can even also join in those R and Ds as well as uh, this uh, current openings uh, for RPA as well as other things. Yeah, sure, Rajesh. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. so any other questions guys from my end no questions if anybody yeah no problem uh, if you have any questions uh, you can uh, contact me with my email id so venkat.rpa.gmail.com and you can even ping me in my whatsapp number 9618631383 okay uh, rajesh i will talk to you separately yeah sure sir no problem yeah. okay Uh, okay, Step. guys. Uh, this is all about my uh, the, the brief about this RPA tools. Okay. Tomorrow onwards, the class will start from morning seven to eight. That is the class timing every day. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Please uh, give me all your email IDs and WhatsApp numbers. I uh, I already created one WhatsApp group and uh, now for a couple of people. You just you know send the uh, information to my email ID or WhatsApp number. Okay. Note down this WhatsApp number and then I will include you in the Zoom meetings from tomorrow morning seven to eight. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, see you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Venkat. Thanks to all. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah.